Um, so it looks like um, we have uh, 12, maybe um, 11, 12 more, and then we may get a few uh, folks coming in uh, right after this. So uh, just to jump on into it. Uh, so our first question that we're trying to explore here is how uh, should we treat uh, floor space that is not in production? So um, let's uh, let's open that up and and we'll see how this works. If you just uh, take off your, um, uh, you can unmute yourself. If we need to use the raise hand features because we have a lot of folks trying to come in at the same time, we can shift to that. Um, but let's just go ahead and, and try to have um, a dialogue with uh, taking your uh, selves off of mute and we'll see how this works. You ready to go, Justin? Yep, go ahead. Jump on in. No, no, uh, David Otto here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why we didn't include uh, floor space in any calculation for for plant canopy. Um, so the short answer is exclude it. Uh, floor space that is not being uh, dedicated to a grow uh, that is plant in the ground or um, in the uh, hydroponic uh, infrastructure. However, you're doing it, indoor, outdoor, vertical, horizontal. Uh, floor space, in my view, is is not uh, not to be included. Sure. So, so let me ask you a clarifying question on that. Um, as the plants are growing, obviously, you're going to have um, uh, different volume. I guess um, does that come into play in your thought? Well, to the extent you would need more full floor space for a broader canopy. Uh, oh yeah, sure. But then then that's the that's the planning stage. Ultimately, my view is the the it's the wrong measurement. That is the canopy. Uh, I, I don't. I, I think that's the um, the error in this this uh, uh, regulation and, and the um, the exercise around uh, monitoring uh, production. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think that that's the the incorrect measurement. Ultimately, you're talking about a number of plants. That's that's how you get there from a managing the uh, production output. Okay, and that that actually may be a future um, conversation as well. So I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, and. Uh, anybody else? I think somebody uh, was just trying to talk and then you went on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, there you go. I, I agree with David. Uh, it's just, it, 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 it's, if it's not being used specifically to grow a plant then i mean what what would it matter if i have a twenty thousand square foot warehouse but a tier one license and i'm just growing for that but i just have a big space i mean it, it just it, it if it's not directly related to growing the plant it should not be calculated at all i mean because i mean unless you're building your entire building brand new for yourself which almost does not exist in our industry I mean, it does, but it's like most of the time we're renting out buildings and warehouses that we can get for rather cheap and building like small grow rooms inside of a massive warehouse. I just feel like that wouldn't, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And that's that's kind of where we stand. Excellent, thank you. Other thoughts? Hey, Justin, can you ask if anybody disagrees? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feel free. Uh, anybody, uh, you know, feel, and, and let me just reinforce this. Feel free to disagree. Uh, feel free to offer alter uh, uh, an alternative perception. Um, what we're trying to do is get as much type of feedback for consideration as we're, we're looking at this uh, moving forward. So um, any any comments are appreciated. So going back, does anybody disagree with uh, excluding the floor space that's not um, uh, being used for growing? Hey, good afternoon, Justin. This is Gregory Foster with Cannabis Observer. You hear me? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Gregory. So maybe just a clarifying question. Um, so with uh, the proposal that if the floor space is not in production, you know, say it doesn't count, towards um, a particular 
square footage of canopy that's that's allocated. So like my understanding is that right now, um, as part of the licensing process, um, you have to specify in your floor plans where you're going to be growing plants. Is that correct? And so that's the calculation for the canopy um, or, or as measured by enforcement in the field. Yeah, that I believe correct? that I, I believe that's still uh, accurate. And we're, okay. we're looking at, you know, if we're moving forward, you know, should should that approach change? Um, you know, maybe, you know, how we look at the floor plans, how we look at proposals, you know, what should actually be um, part of that plant canopy production calculation, if you will. So, um, yeah, you know, any, anything's open for uh, brainstorming along those lines. So I think I'm kind of wondering how that would play out in practice if you were only counting um, the, the particular square footage that is actively growing plants, then thinking about that from the, the perspective of um, producers who have um, a lot of space compared to producers who have just the amount that is um, within their canopy, so to speak. Um, I'm just wondering if that would kind of change that dynamic in terms of um, how quickly you could transition to bring, say, a different room um, up into production. Um, if, uh, I, again, I'm not a grower, so I don't know what the turnaround time is from taking a room that's been growing for X amount of time and turning that around and making it available again. Uh, so just sort of wondering about that dynamic uh, between uh, producers who have a lot of space to spare versus ones who are on a pretty tight budget. So are you are you looking at that from a just a, an operational oversight issue? Or are you looking for at that from a, a risk mitigation? So you're not growing over canopy is um, is there uh, some context you can you can add? No, no, no. I, I just think you know. I, I know that the the agency staff and policy and rules staff are always very careful about um, kind of unintended consequences of particular approaches to rules, and so that's one that I would just raise as um, uh, uh, something to consider. And it'd be interesting to hear what other folks in the room who actually have experience with the the growing process around that. Okay, Tim, I see uh, you have your hand up. Yeah, hi, this is uh, Tim Betts. I'm a tier three producer. I also have a processor license. And um, yeah, to that specific question, I think that was a great, a great question um, that Gregory brought up. Uh, for example, we do a lot of farming outdoors in eastern Washington, and many of the, the pens are quite large. And um, I think the original intention behind creating such large pens was to have the opportunity to reconfigure uh, the grows from year to year. So for example, you might want to do uh, the north half of your pen one year and then do a crop rotation and use the soil on the south side of your pen the next year. So, um, in my own experiences with licensing, we've been able to actually just say, hey, we intend to grow somewhere in this pen. It's just an open field. There's no structures. These are outdoor grows. We intend to grow 30,000 square feet somewhere within this pen, uh, but we're not gonna say on our site plan exactly which 30,000 square feet out of this giant pen we're gonna use because it's gonna change from year to year some years we may want to put 10 feet between our rows. Some years we may want to configure the rows very tight. And that's something that both licensing and enforcement has um, allowed us to do. But I know that everybody's experiences have been different throughout the state, which I think is, is a larger issue. Uh, but I, I do think that that's important that that sort of flexibility uh, be preserved because it may be that one patch of soil you know, after a while it may become uh, disease ridden 
or you've farmed it for too many years, it's very standard practice in outdoor uh, farming of any crop to do crop rotations. So I think allowing for, for flexibility uh, and allowing the sort of the crop area, the canopy area to move around within the licensed premises makes a lot of sense from my perspective and experience. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I'll thoughts? second that. I'll second that, Justin. Okay. Um, yeah, there's no question that crop rotation and flexibility with respect to um, where plants are located, how many, um, all needs to be you know, sort of properly understood, independent of um, the uh, floor space uh, issue or non-producing floor space. I, as far as I'm concerned, you get as much non-producing floor space as you like. Um, it's really about the the product that it's the production that's that's uh, the, that's the issue. Okay. Other thoughts? Oh, I see um, South Slope. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I'm going to agree with pretty much everything Tim was saying about uh, floor space and production and, and uh, crop rotation is one, one particular aspect of it that he brought up I appreciate, but really when you get into to defining the entire area of a, of a business, you know, if you're saying this is your licensed premise and we're going to count you know, the majority of it or we're going to count in your fence line as your canopy, um, at that point, you're dictating more or less the method of production for the farmer uh, because everybody's going to pack in as much plants as they can in, into an area. You know, there won't be spaces between rows. The farmers will have the option to go out of business or jam as much plants as they can to in, uh, into a block, and that's going to lead to all kinds of uh, bad practices. It's going to be the opposite of best practices. Is you're going to end up with increased mold levels, increased pesticide use, all kinds of unhealthy situations with outdoor production because you're you're hemming in the farmer and what they can do uh, in that space really in a way that is antithetical to any other kind of crop production. Yeah, so, so can you expand on that? Um that concept a little more so what i have is you know when when you're getting into defining the area of the business you end up dictating those operations which can lead then um to increase negative effects if you're going to have you know uh close crops and so you're you're looking at uh you had mentioned pesticides and molds um what what other type of impacts would you see um if folks were trying to uh engage uh or trying to fit as much as they can in that small space I mean, you're getting into a little bit of a broader conversation about farming practices. And I think that's okay. why I, I kind of would generalize that you're dictating the farmer how he runs his operation or a business owner. Not not okay. directly, but that will be the practical effect. Um, I can say, you know, 100% that you're going to see an intensity of use in that space. And when you're talking about any type of sustainability or, um, you know, I, I, that's why I like Tim's point about the viability of that soil. Um, intense crop production methods don't by nature lend themselves to uh, sustainable or best practices. Okay. They're, they're, they're premised on the application of a lot of inputs, uh, usually chemical inputs. So, one of the things that, um, thank you for that. Uh, one of the things in, in thinking about, you know, that that type of, and the reason I was I was kind of asking about that is when we look at the question on, okay, how do we street, treat floor space that's not in production? What, I guess, how does that look in those types of businesses when you have that, you know, um, let, let's just call it an overpacked area. Um, when we're trying to measure the production, I mean, do, does that look like, 
there's you know more production than what's reasonable or i'm you know i'm i'm not sure i'm couching that that quite right but when i'm looking at okay those i guess how much non production floor space would there be in those and then how would we differentiate the appropriate approach between something like that and something that has that uh, greater uh, distance and flexibility i mean the existing rules and program although there was I don't know where that failed, but looking at what was written, they were appropriate in many ways. I don't know if they lack mechanisms in terms of uh, enforcement or areas of responsibility being clearly defined, but you can go up and down the West Coast and look at, you know, every state and municipality that's ever regulated has approached this issue of how do we measure canopy. Um, and it, uh, and it, really, at the end of the day, it comes down to, is there um, a person on the ground who can measure it? Measuring canopy is not difficult, whether it's in a row or a block, you know, whether there's aisles between them. That, that's not the factor. You don't need to put things together in a square. Oh, you cut out there for a second. 